there's a process called HPP, high pressure processing. And uh, basically, I'm sure you've probably, I don't know if you've had guests on here who've talked Brooke about has, HPP. Does Brooke do that? She does. Yeah, she, she does. does yeah. I was going to say. Basically, uh, high pressure processing, it's a process that we make our juice, seal it in the bottle, and then it goes to a third party where it goes into this really crazy, huge contraption on a conveyor belt, water. It looks like an oil tank. It looks like an oil tanker, like an 18 wheel. Yeah. Water <laughs> fills, the water a, fills like the chamber. Our bottle is sealed. So nothing's getting into the juice, but we apply 87,000 pounds of pressure on the water. And basically what that does is number one, it extends the shelf life of the juice without killing it's a cold water. So you're not killing the nutrients in the juice, but also it kills harmful bacteria like Listeria, E. coli, Salmonella. So the raw juice, we used to have to have a warning label on it that would say not safe for pregnant women, people with weakened immune systems. And that was a warning that you had to have because bacteria could form in the bottle. So by going through this HPP process, now our product not only has a longer shelf life, but it's safe for everyone to consume. I like the visual of applying pressure evenly to an egg on all sides. Basically, that's what it is. You apply the 87 pounds of pressure pressure, and the, the egg doesn't crack, but it changes the molecules in the inside of the egg. What becomes the shelf life now? Is it like, does it go to like two weeks or what does it go to? At the time we were raw juice purists and we were like, this is crazy. So then we started testing with it and realized it's actually great. The integrity of the juice stays intact. So then we started with a seven day. Then we went to 15, then to 21, then to 30, 45. We're at 90 days. We plan on staying at 90 we days. We could have had it at 90 days from the get go, but because we were afraid of alienating the purists And there is two worlds in the juice world is one, you are either a quote unquote purist where you have your juice bar and you make your three day shelf life juice and you sell it within your four walls. You produce it and sell it within your four walls. Beverly Hills juice. Beverly Hills juice. Yep. If you have a wholesale arm to your business, you can't produce your, your three day shelf life raw product and sell it outside of those four walls to a customer. It's elite. To, to it's like illegal. a wholesale account. So for example, they can't sell that 3D juice to a coffee shop and then have them sell it. So the health department was catching up, you know, kind of like finding out about different people doing this at this point. It was point a new now. industry. So there was a new industry being created. We used to fall under juice. So all of a sudden we became a new category to the health department, which was cold press juice. And then a whole bunch of regulations kind of But it was interesting, you know, we were in it as it was happening. There were times when the health department would come into our store and we had, at a time we had three stores, they would come in and if it didn't say at the time, we didn't know it needed to say, let's say perishable keep refrigerated or something like that on, on the bottle. They would come in and they would, in front of our customers, take the entire fridge worth of juice that we had been overnight juicing, put it in a black garbage bag with a red tag on it and say, until we approve your labels at the head office or whatever, you can't sell this. And this didn't fall into any kind of grandfather clauses or anything like that. They were just able to make these rules and then retroactively go and enforce them. It was, you know, it was tricky because the rules existed, but no one was really doing it. So really, like we would hear about, you know, Press Brothers or another juice company. They had someone come in and they took all their product off the shelf and we're like, oh, gosh, we hope they don't come to our store. But we were all evolving at the same time. So, you know, it was the difference between raw juice and doing the high pressure processing is that When we had our raw juice, we were juicing overnight, six nights a week. We had a team of 35 guys in the kitchen or people in the kitchen, men and women, and they would juice through the night. We'd have three drivers show up every morning, load up the trucks. We'd hit the streets and start our distribution and take back expired product from customers that we're now crediting them for. So we're losing money there. And then this was basically the cycle. Once we moved to high pressure processing, we would do a massive full day production And then we would take all that juice to get it high pressure processed. And so it was a really interesting time in the industry. But we, it was an exciting time. What year was this? 15, 16. 15, 16. 15, 16. Okay. What started ringing the bells was uh, there was an incident where somebody had gotten salmonella off of drinking, I won't say the company's juice, but but a company's juice that's well known. And, And then the health department, it got on their radar and then just... Everyone was deployed, you know, all the health department people were deployed in their territories and then they just had to search for cold pressed juice that didn't have the, you know, proper label. Yeah, meeting the requirements meeting, meeting that the we requirements. had to meet. Yeah, just, I mean, ultimately they were trying to make our industry safer, but at the time, oh gosh, we were hating it. We were like, it's we still frustrating, especially it's when expensive. someone comes in and clears out your entire shelf yeah. in front of your con- 
customers. It yeah, was meanwhile, really... we're, you know, we're struggling <laughs> to pay rent, you know, and you're like, struggling to you know, pay to pay rent, rent at our personal house, you know, <laughs> yeah. because the business was what really mattered. You know, we were like, that's our lifeline. And we right had put, now. you know, I think that's the thing when you have your friends and family as investors. Yeah. Yeah, and mean, your own money. There's a lot of pressure there. It's an added burden. It is, but what I appreciate is that failing is not an option. Mm -hmm. And so you have to get really creative with ways to stay alive. And that's what we did. I mean, it got really crazy. 